You are now listening to Pole Hook Golf, an unfiltered golf podcast taking you inside the ropes with unfiltered stories, insights, analysis, and exclusive interviews. Welcome back, everybody, to Pull Hook Golf, the podcast. This is episode number 69, a very f- favorite number, Bobby. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We're, we're, no. off, we're off to a solid no. start. <laughs> No comment. No comment. No I comment used- from the bleacher seats. I got you. No comment. <laughs> well, everybody, welcome back. Pull Hook Golf. I'm Matt Cook. This is Bobby Brown. And man, 4th of July was yesterday. We had a crazy week last week. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of this. I mean, we're going to recap the Rocket Mortgage Classic which uh, Ricky Fowler, I mean, we did an episode a little while back about Ricky Fowler being back. Now he's officially back. He's back on the podium. He, um, or, well, I guess that's a live golf thing, the whole podium thing, which we'll talk about live golf in uh, Andalusia. Yeah. So that was out in Valderrama and we'll be covering that. But without further ado, Bobby, let's talk about our weekend review here. We're going to bring back this old segment because uh, I really want to get a take from you as to how Detroit was and then really how your 4th of July was. Okay. Yeah. Well, what do you start? What what do you want to start with? Uh, Let's start with the, my 4th of July was nothing. I'm going to go backwards. It was nothing. I was sitting in my hotel room here in, (laughs) where am I, Matt? Iowa. (laughs) I'm in Iowa. (laughs) Yeah. I'm in Iowa right now. Yeah, but if you go like a hundred, if you go a mile one way, you're in another state. You go a mile one way, you're in another state. So um, uh, I'm in Iowa this week, and the Fourth of July was very loud out here because we're staying at a place called the Isle Casino on the Rock River, and um, it was uh, it was pretty loud for pretty late last night. Didn't sleep very good. Uh, and how was your Fourth of July? Well, Bobby, Did you I hear any of that? You. I, I heard it all. I mean, it was a little bit scattered. So folks, we've got oh, okay. some real internet challenges tonight where Bobby <laughs> being in Iowa, I, I asked him, I go, is there high speed internet there yet? And we really don't know. I mean, you can tell by his backdrop, oh. that is not a green screen folks. That is an old school casino hotel. And really, I mean, we're just grateful to have your appearance here tonight, Bobby, but I'll talk a little bit about my 4th of July weekend, which I was out on a houseboat. Oh. And actually a few friends, uh, they invited us out. So there was actually 16 of us in total um, on this houseboat. And we went out to Lake Powell in uh, Arizona, but we ended up in Utah. So that's a whole nother story. But your boy here, Bobby, man, there were some, there were some questionable things that uh, took place. So first of all, we almost didn't get out of the dock because there's a tight little exit point. And at one point, the captain we were just about to strike another ship and you've got some people who have been on literally like really going back 38 years. So when they start screaming and saying, you're going to hit, you're going to hit, you know, you're probably going to hit the other boat. So we almost didn't leave the dock, but captain pulled off what I like to refer to as a good old fast and furious Tokyo drift. He started pulling levers okay. that I had no idea about. He started turning that wheel, that wheel, and my God, did we all of a sudden just straight shift and do a full drift to the other side? We narrowly missed that boat by about a centimeter. So two houseboats almost collided. We almost didn't get out there. And then really the highlight, I think, of everybody's week, and I hope this makes it onto social media because one of the people who was on the houseboat, they ended up recording me going down the water slide. Well, the couple we were with, the uh, young gentleman, Zane, he proposed to his girlfriend and now fiance, Shelby, and when Shelby asked me that day to go down the water slide, knees first, I couldn't say no because I didn't want to ruin their day. You know what I mean? So I went down (laughs) knees first and guess what? Right up at the top, my knees caught and my God, did I do a tumble down that water slide, but no injuries, none at all. I almost went face first, but then (laughs) then I remembered 
tuck and roll. So I tucked that right shoulder, went under, just tumbled over. I mean, it was, it wasn't pretty, but there's going to be a video at some point. It's going to hit social media. I know it is. They were talking, everybody was dying about it. So that was my 4th of July. I was basically out there in the middle of nowhere with no service. But man, when I got back, did I catch up on Ricky Fowler's takedown of the rocket yes. mortgage classic. Yes. So yes. we definitely Exciting. gotta, we definitely gotta start there because Ricky looked great. However, towards the end of that round, it got a little shaky, didn't it? It did. It did. I mean, he, I, you know, I didn't get to watch much of it. We teed off. On, um, we made the cut. We teed off on the other side and we were probably an hour. I would say we were about an hour um, in front of the leaders time wise, we had some weather come up, Matt. So they did the split teaser trying to beat a storm, uh, one in 10 from six forty five to eight forty five, something like that. So I didn't really get to see the end, but I do know that he made a quick birdie, got to 23 quick. And it looks like he was stalling out, like he was staying at 23. So, um, I was preoccupied with our T 74 finish. So I was trying to <laughs> squeeze every penny out of the old Korean that I possibly could. <laughs> and not a lot came out of there. Just a few here and there about 17,000 worth. Um, and, uh, so I really didn't see, I, I couldn't see what was happening. You know, we, I was watching when I got back to the locker room, I took a quick shower. I turned my phone on. I, I, I was checking out. I knew Adam was making a run. I knew Colin was making a run. I think they were all pretty stacked. I think, I don't think, I think Taylor Moore was in the mix for a while. The Monday qualifier was close for a while too. Peter Quest, that, the kid from BYU. So um, uh, make a long story short, I jumped in a car with another caddy. So we were driving over here to Iowa for the <laughs> fifth major, the John Deere Classic, as everybody calls it. And um, I was watching I was watching on the phone. So I didn't have much video. I don't know if you've ever made it. In, you've never made the drive from Detroit to uh, quad cities is basically, yeah, it's not very good. It's not a good drive. It's six and a half hours and it's cornfields and it's fields. And then you got to kind of, you, you, we had to go through Chicago O'Hare, which is, is no fun and switch cars. So it was a little bit disaster. Where am I going with this? I didn't have any video. I couldn't get any <laughs> video of it. So I was just going by the, by the shot by shot, shot tracker. So, but I did see the videos, uh, uh um, uh, I did see the video of him playing the last hole when he got into the playoff. And if I'm not mistaken, you help me out because you got to see it. But I think he hit his drive way right. It looked like like right of the bunkers over there. And he stuffed something to what, three feet or four feet? How clutch is that? No, and then he gets it, it done. And then he gets it done in the playoff. And, oh, so he, no. So you have get, a slightly reversed. Into the playoff. So to get into the playoff, yeah. he hit a little draw down the left hand no, side. That, yeah. Oh, okay, so he go ahead. It, down the left-hand side and almost hit it into that little ravine on the left, but he stayed oh, okay. in the first cutter rough. Then that's okay. the shot he stuck to just outside of three feet, made okay. that birdie to get into the playoff. And then okay. in the playoff, he sprayed one way right. I mean, off of the grandstands over there on the right. And sure right. enough, he just hit an absolute flushed iron shot out of the uh -huh. rough. That and he, okay. I mean, he got a little bit lucky because the rough was trampled down a bit because of everybody walking through there, but just absolutely struck it. I think he hit it to about 15 feet or so, and then yeah, that's when yeah, he dropped yeah, that yeah. putt. And what a reaction from Ricky, yeah. huh? Did you see his I reaction know. at the end? I, it's, I did, yeah, I did, but it's, it's that was a great reaction. I mean, it's been a long, it's been a long time coming. Everybody knows about his issues the last three or four years and obviously getting back to butch had, was it was a big thing you know it, it he got some things straightened out but more more importantly with a guy like ricky a world-class player i think which gets their head straightened out better than anybody else so you know we kind of i, I mean anybody that pays attention to golf at any kind of level you know knows that ricky was going to win sooner or later he just kept knocking on the door knocking on the door and he finally got it done and what a great way to to get it done i mean that's you know, of course, anybody wants to win by four or five shots, but when you can get it done in that situation and execute those shots, I mean, that's just why he's a world-class player. And let's be honest, now that his game is back, I mean, I didn't look at the official world rankings this week, but I mean, he's sure playing like a top, easy top 20 player in the world right now, I would think. That might yeah, even be conservative, don't you think? I mean, he could be, he could be borderline. At, yeah, he could be a top 10 player right now so good for him good for his caddy ricky romano which is a good buddy of ours he's also won that tournament 
before some with Nate Lashley. Back with, with Nate Lashley, you know, I got a question for you. Who makes more money, Joe Scarborough? Yeah, with Nate Lashley. I got a question for you. Who makes more money, Joe Scarborough with Tom Kim or Ricky Romano with Ricky Fowler? Um, how many years we got on those? I know which way I'm going. <laughs> I I think I think Ricky Fowler. What do you got this year? Uh, oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I'm I'm on the same page with you. Um, I'm on the same page. I I think that that um, uh, Ricky Romano makes more money with Ricky Fowler. So that's um, uh, the rest of the leaderboard. I'm struggling for sentences right now because if, if I don't know how this is coming across, but Matt's locking up and freezing up on me, and I'm getting <laughs> delayed. Your delayed sentences. So. Let's try and push. We're, let's try and push forward with this. We're pushing uh, t- through. Taylor Moorhead. Jeez <laughs> <laughs> Louise. What, a, what are the chances? Next year, we will not be doing a podcast from the John Deere Classic, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Unless things change around here. <laughs> unless they get high speed internet. <laughs> unless, <a> good, unless, <laughs> unless, things, unless things change around here. Um, I can't, it doesn't look like I'm going to be watching any shows on Netflix this week due to this uh, technical issue. <laughs> I, I mean, think. it's going to be tough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let, let me try and power through the leaderboard. So Taylor, yeah. Moore, Taylor Moore, but so, well, obviously we got to talk about Adam Hadwin and Colin Marikawa both had great weeks. Colin Marikawa, you know, you don't, he hasn't won in a couple of years. You don't think he's having a great year. All of a sudden he really was having a consistent year and now he's in the mix and he hit a lot of golf shots. And more importantly for Colin, he made a lot of putts, right? That's the deal with Colin. He hits it great. It's a matter of hitting putt, uh, making putts. Adam Hadwin's been playing great all year. I read something today, Matt, that said that if Adam Hadwin would have won this, it would have been the fifth win on the PGA tour by a Canadian this year. So wow. remember when I was saying, remember I was asking you a few weeks ago, I'm like, what do you think? think Canadian golfer it was a Canadian open Canadian golfers or Korean golfers which way do you go so I think it's technically it's Canadian golfers are a little deeper right because right Korean golfers yeah Korean golfers have you know Sung Jae Si Woo and then you know my guy Ben on you know KH Lee and and then that kind of group so it's a Canadian golfers Adam Shank had another good week he finished at 20 under tied for seventh I should talk about Peter Quest who finished tied for fourth as a Monday qualifier made a boatload of money and is this is his third or fourth time he's Monday in this year. He's had made the cut, I believe, in every single event, and he's super close to getting that that special temporary status. So he's got a top ten. He's back in here this week in Iowa at the John Deere Classic. So good for him. The story with Peter Quest is he was an All American coming out of BYU, and at this time of the year, a couple of years ago, is you know all the college guys are getting their starts now. So he was one of the college guys that that got like seven starts. So, and he didn't do much with it, but it looks like he could be maybe finding his own path right now, a little bit of a late bloomer, if you, if so to speak, at 25 or 26 years old. So good for him. He made some money. Um, I said Adam Shank had another good week. God, he's having a sneaky good year. Two second place finishes, a few more top tens. You just got to think he's going to be on the verge of doing something really good soon. My guy, Brian Harmon, another top 10, 18 under. Um, <clears throat> the big news of the week. You want to know what the big I do. news of the week? Roy Merritt is back. Wow. Troy Merritt made the cut. Can you hear anything I'm saying? Yeah. I need to know that. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. I feel like I'm on LSD watching the screen right now, and it is not fun. <laughs> it is a bad trip right now, bro. <laughs> oh, I'm not God. seeing colors. I'm not I'm seeing dying. anything that's making me smile and happy. It's <laughs> too serious. <laughs> Who else I got on this leaderboard to talk well, about? I mean, you, you got Troy Merritt back, which, I mean, well, that, that that's a thing big, in and of itself. That's, that's, the, that, that's the big news of the week. So right there. So uh, Keegan, Keegan, pretty good week. Tied for 21st, Max Homer right up there. Sung Jay, um, tied for 24th. Um, Ludwig Auberg, tied for 40th. You know, he's the big stud that everybody is just like raving over for obvious reasons, but everybody's predicting him to win a tournament. Um, I, he he finished 40th at the Rocket Mortgage. He's had a couple other decent finishes, but let's, I think that like there's too much going on with him right now. You know what I mean? Thinking that he's going to win and talking about him 
guys played four tournaments and talking about him possibly be on the Ryder Cup. So everybody just media wise needs to slow down with this kid. Let him let him play some golf. And, and I feel like they're putting a lot of expectations on his shoulders already. Um, I'm going to bring up a golfer that we played with on Sunday. And the reason why I'm going to bring up this guy's name, his name is Vincent Norman. He played this his, his rookie year, he played one year at Florida State. He is from Sweden. And the reason why I'm bringing this guy's name up is because, you know, when when our thing comes on YouTube and people make their comments, you know this yeah. more than I do, right? Did you read our comments this year? So some guy sent shot some comment to me like he thought that my guy, SH Kim and Vincent Norman were the best ones, were his picks coming out of the corn. This guy obviously knows what he's talking about, were the best ones coming out of the Corn Ferry Tour. And I agreed with him on that. I didn't agree with him. I agreed with him because my a buddy of mine caddies for him and my son caddies on the Corn Ferry Tour. So I've heard all these great things about him. I know he had a pretty good year at Florida State. But what I saw Sunday, he missed a shot seven or eight under on Sunday. And he smokes it. Like, I'm, like this guy's a top tier driver, like a top 20 driver. And he hits a nice little cut. He chips. He does everything good. So he's not off to a great start his rookie year. He's barely over 100. But just everybody remember that name, Vincent Norman. And whoever the guy was that made those comments, you know what you're talking about, my man. So, um, uh, wow, that was a D trip's not doing me good. What do you no, got, Matt? But that was a very positive, uh, little comment there from Mr. Bobby Brown about yeah, this an audience got- member. Yeah. Yeah. Knows what he's talking about. I mean, nobody, nobody but this guy is that are well aware of who he was. But I uh, mean, I was super, I was super impressed. And I wrote back to this guy in the comments, and I'm like, yeah, I'm a big, big Vince Norman fan too. And I told him that I thought he was going to do his damage coming up here pretty soon. I actually might have said Barbazol and um, and Barracuda, but I know he decided to WD um, next week. He's not playing next week. And wait, he is playing next week. Excuse me, he WD this week. He took this week off to go back home so um uh, wow i just turned that big thing into like um uh, nothing right there with all my gibberish (laughs) it's a tough night for the kid man i'm in iowa yeah you're in iowa on lsd apparently and uh you want to know how you know you're here's two ways you know how you're in Iowa. never do a podcast in iowa because you don't have a high-speed internet and when the laundromat that you have to go to across the street has a bar in it then you know you're in iowa the scrub pub what a name. Love the that. Scrub Pub. It's got this little bar. Yeah, it's got a little bar in there, frozen pizza. There's even a nail joint in there. Ladies doing nails in there, too. They're subleasing the shit out of things here. And so I got my all my laundry done today, and I feel like I'm ready to go. Did I tell you we finished tied for 74th last week? Boom. Did you hear how we made the cut? Did you hear no. how we made the cut? No. They didn't, you want to hear this? Yeah. We played like shit, like poop the first day. We shot one over. One over on that golf course. And... Um, he came out of the blocks rolling on Friday and he was, we teed off on the front. He was five under through eight. So we were immediately on the cut number. We were immediately going, went from 130th to being on the cut number and he's rolling and he makes a silly three putt bogey on nine. Then we make another bogey on 11. So now we've fell back to two under, we bounce back. He makes a birdie. He's three under where we're, he's, he's got like three or four good looks coming in you know, 10, 12 feet, doesn't make one of them. They're catching edges. He's pissed. He's going to break something. It's the first time I've seen him get pissed. And we get to 17 and we're three under and it's a hittable par five. And, and he, he goes, he goes driver, driver into this thing, just short of the green. He chips up there to about six or seven feet and it lifts out on him for the last time. And I'm like, and all did the whole thing about Ricky blocked a little fairway bunkers and bunkers. And we thought it going to, you're back. <laughs> oh, if Bobby, it froze on the most precious are you back? image of you. Oh, you're fi- <laughs> there. We go. You are back, my friend. Fin- finish that one up. Where am I? <laughs> Where did you? What was the last thing you heard? The last lip out. Okay, the last lip out on 17. So we go to 18T. He drives it in the way right into the right bunker, or so we think it's in the bunker, and it's two inches above the bunker. It's two inches above the bunker and a bunch of deep rough. He can't get he can't get anything but an eight iron. It's gonna go straight up in the air. Have you seen the 18th hole on TV? It's got that little yeah. hazard that runs along through it and through the middle of the green. So he skies this eight iron into that. We have to make birdie into the hazard, right? That's it. That's all she wrote into the hazard. So we're walking up there and he's Sheba and I'm Sheba. And I'm like, God, how does this happen? Is there any chance he could chip this in? And I get up there and I look at the ball and I'm like, oh, it's just buried, right? 
he goes up and he hits his chip and he fucking blew it in on the fly. He flew wow. it in for birdie from the hazard. Yeah, it like flew in the hole, came back out, smiled at us, and went back in again. <laughs> and we, and I just sat there like this. I couldn't believe it. This was my reaction. And he fell to the ground in jubilation. And we finished seventy fourth. We shouldn't even been there, but we made it. Do you get all That's that? That's incredible. Yeah, I know from the hazard. I mean, from the from hazard. The hazard. You know the you know the Monday Q guy, the Monday yeah. Q info Twitter guy that does all the Monday Q stuff. He has been pressing this thing where there was no video of it. It would have been a, a Sports Center top ten play of the day. I, I assure you, it would have been a top ten play of the day. And there was no video of it. And the Monday Q guy got wind of it, and he just went all over crazy. He's like, "I've been saying for years that," and I think you said the same thing too, Matt. Is that they need to have a camera on guys that are grinding to make the cut to see instead of just the same old marquee players, especially on a exactly. Friday, right? You gotta have you gotta have some to, roaming two or three cameras that are streaming just what the guys are grinding on the cut line to do because this would have absolutely blown you away. I've never. You know, 18 million tournaments I've caddied out here. I've never seen anybody make the cut like that when you think you're just deader than a doornail. And then to fly it in on the fly was just was just incredible. So that's, that's all insane I got. That it, that it's I know. not on camera. I know. I know. Uh, I know. I couldn't Thank goodness we have you it. in Iowa. Anyways, we're on well, LSD just sharing yes, the story yes. with us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Or the Grateful Dead playing. <laughs> yeah. Well, Bobby, why don't you tell us what happened with our penny bet, huh? Well, I smoked you. So yeah, you I'm did. just going to say I smoked you because because you're in love with Tom Kim and I'm in love with Sung J.M. and you missed the cut and I made the cut. And finished what, is, what is wrong so with that Tom Kim right now? A little bit of a chin. What did that get me? That, that got me from seven down to six. Correct. Yeah. You tell me, Cameron McCormick. Yeah. Cameron McCormick. That's not good. That's not a Cameron good fit. McCormick. Yeah, that's not a good fit. Yep. Yep. I yep. don't like what his I, swing is I, looking I like at before, all. I said it before, Cameron McCormick. No, I've said, I said Cam McCormick for short game and Cam McCormick for putting. And I'm no genius, but when that kid was playing so good last year and all of a sudden you go to an instructor that you've never worked with before, it's just a head. I, it just blows me away, right? It just blows me away why guys want to feel like they're already on the verge of becoming one of this very famous, well-known, possibly future major winner. And then you feel like you need to get better instead of just getting older and more experienced, right? You want You want to go... Find out, coach. Now, with that being said, he'll probably win something coming up in the next few weeks with the way my luck's going on these things and my predictions. But you know, he's just not playing. He's just not playing that good. Joe looks frustrated out there too. I'm just going to say it. Joe looks a little bit frustrated and, and and impatient. And you know, I wonder if I wonder after Ricky gets it done. Well, Joe's such a good guy. He would never. There would ne never be any animosity towards that or or anything like that. But that's what we discussed a few minutes ago. That's a great question. I think Ricky Romano makes more money in the next. If game, Ricky Fowler's game's back, game is back, he's going to have five more, at least five more great years of playing world class golf, right? So, I think um, uh, I think he's the better player than Tom Kim's going to be. Only time will tell. I'll probably get butchered for, butchered for saying that. I don't think I don't so. Think. I, I really don't really? because no. Ricky went through his lull, and how many times yeah. do guys go through that lull and then they find they finally get back and then they're just back because yeah. they know okay. Here's where I went wrong before. Here's the things that I can't have happen again. And you just get into that flow where, you know, you're now you, you don't have that fear behind you anymore of, oh, God, is this right. a slump? And really with him working with Butch, I mean, the swing looks fantastic. That's what started to leave him, by the way, in that final stretch of holes. He started missing some golf shots and um, started getting a little bit laid off at the top, which is the problem that he's had and that he's been working on with Butch. So um, that the last couple swings with the irons actually were spot on. So he corrected it. I mean, he's grooved it now. And I expect some big things out of Ricky Fowler moving into the, in, into the future, but let's talk a little bit about where you're at right now. Um, if, yeah. <laughs> if this trip doesn't continue to disconnect, uh, but let's preview the John Deere classic. I mean, you've been out there so many times. I mean, tell us what you love about John Deere, what the course conditions look like. Like, what are we going to look for this week? Can you hear? Hey, we're here. I didn't hear a word you said. 
Oh, that's okay. I just want okay. to know about the John Deere Classic. John Deere Coming Classic in, rundown? Yeah, will you just give us a rundown, oh, Bobby? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> It's going to be, it's going to be another, (laughs) Jesus Christ. It's going to be another 23 or 24 under par. It's super soft out here. You can make a ton of, (laughs) keep drinking, man. I wish I was too. Um, uh, You can make a ton of birdies out here. Uh, There's a little bit of rough. The greens are pure. Um, It's going to be another birdie fast out here. Like it always is. It's going to be 23. This is going to be three weeks that we're going to have a winner at at anywhere from 23 to 26 under, I predict. Um, We're not supposed to get any more weather this week. So hopefully we don't because this place is known for getting some lightning and things just pop up out of the blue here and it gets a little bit spooky alarms and shit start going off. So um, man, it's going to be, it's going to be a birdie fest. You know, this place is known for long shots, first time winners, popping up you know michael kim popped his cherry here geez jordan smith bryson dechambeau dylan fratelli all won here for the very first time you know you remember for years it was dominated by stricker by steve stricker and zach johnson so you know i look for somebody i look for some yeah that sounds great <laughs> there's you don't need a place to tell you the truth <laughs> I'm, I'm with you bobby should we cut this episode right now <laughs> I didn't, I didn't catch, Bobby, I didn't catch a goddamn thing you just said. Uh, so let, let's try to get through the penny bet. What do you think? A little penny bet I action? Saw- <laughs> I, yeah, I, I didn't hear a goddamn thing you said. <laughs> We're going to lose 25 subscribers. I've already done the math. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. We'll make it up to you next week. Uh, what do you want to talk about now, Matt? Your now penny bet. I hear you. What? Well, yeah. Why do Why don't we do the penny bet real quick while while I got you? <laughs> okay. Go. Who you want? You you won last week. It's your call. <laughs> I'm taking S H Kim. <laughs> yeah. Woo-hoo-hoo. Love that one. <laughs> oh man! So I you're gonna be surprised by this, or at least I think you're gonna be, and you might even be slightly impressed. I'm gonna go Lucas Glover. Wait, say that again. Wait, hang on a second. <laughs> Who you got, Matt? I'm going to go with Lucas Glover. Oh, that's a good pick. Man, that's a really good pick. He's won here before, hasn't he? Did he win here one year? I yeah, believe, I want to yeah, say he, he did. Has one year. Yeah. Hey, I got a personal question for you. Yeah. With all this disaster going on with the podcast, are you hung over today after all your boating and everything? Are you feel good? So I, I was hung over yesterday for sure, but I ended up going to uh, a D backs game with my dad. He's a huge uh-huh. Mets fan. So that okay. sobered me up a bit having to watch the Mets. Um, even though my dad was happy, they ended up winning, but um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm, I'm okay, but you should have heard my voice yesterday. Yeah. Cause it's a, I could, that's why I'm asking. Cause it's a little bit off for you. Oh, it's, it's raspy as shit, Bobby. Yeah. I definitely drank more this past weekend. We were with some people that can drink. Let's put it right. that way. On well, that houseboat. You, if you're in Arizona and you're on a boat, you got it. <laughs> you got it. When in Rome, Bobby, do what the Romans do. I mean, when in Colombia, do what the Colombians do. I mean, yeah, you got to do what the locals right. do. And I mean, my God, did I show up? I showed up right. in a big way out there. I got I, you. I'm uh, proud of you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm proud of you. I'm proud I of you. A, <laughs> I even did some cliff diving too, which was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, you, you wouldn't believe it. Do you remember doing the cliff diving? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there was, I I like that stuff. I get a little wild when it comes to that stuff. So that was was all great. So I got Lucas Glover and you've got SH Kim for the penny bet. Let's quickly, I just want (laughs) to get, I want to get your picks and then I will do a recap of live golf um, for the event at Andalusia or whatever the hell they called it. Valderrama people. It was Valderrama. Uh, and then I'm going to do an upcoming preview of live golf London at Centurion club. But I want to know, and actually I get to go first. So these picks might not surprise you very much because I get the individual pick first. And then I get the team pick now first, because guess what folks, I won both of them. So not only did I lose the penny bet for the PGA yeah. Tour event? But I won both of the Live Golf picks, but louder, but louder last, week. last week. So, so I ended up I winning with Siwon Kim. I mean, it was 
it was the, uh, it wasn't a trifecta because it was just the first and second. I don't know what that's called in horse racing. Um, but I had Siwon Kim who finished dead last. And then I had cliques GC, which right. finished dead last. So I, I had the perfecta there. Okay. Stop. You know, your cliques beat me by a shot. Yeah. You won that one by a shot. I know. And I, and I had Mickelson to finish last. And you see Mickelson was five over through five holes the very first day and, and hit some kind of a gear. So I got a little bit of a cheap thrill there, but I'm just going to say, I'm very mad at myself for giving up C1 Kim. That was the only thing that Should've was never done it. Away. I God damn it. God it's, dang it. So uh, guess who I'm going to go with for my individual pick? C1 Kim. All right, I'm going to take Chase Kepka. Oh, that's pretty yeah. good. I was going to I was yeah. actually going to give you a tip and say go with Matthew Wolf because well, he's back on that. smash <laughs> and they can't stand him. They, they want him off of the team so bad but they yeah. found out that they couldn't kick him off. Right, 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 right. I saw that. <laughs> All right, so I get to pick the t- I get to no, pick the teams, right? No, I get the team because I won with the cliques. Oh, I went, man, I had to win. Well, we know you're going to take No, I, I, no. No, listen, I am not going with the cliques. I am going, going with, with Don't do it. The don't Iron it. Heads. Is that the one I have yeah. always picked? Yeah. That's fucked. What is wrong with you, man? Yeah. That's not even cool. Yeah. You're trying to close me out right here, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, I really am. I got my own guy at a million to one in the PGA Tour event that nobody's ever heard of except for me and you. Uh, I gave you C1 Kim because I hate yeah. Perez so much, right? And now you stole my other team just the right out from under me. Yeah, I'm well, going I'm full gonna, savage. Well, I'm going to flip the full savage and Mongolian reversal you no. down to the <laughs> <Wow>. mat. <laughs> What's your trainer's name? Ando. Ando. <laughs> what is about that, Ando? <laughs> and I'm taking the cleats. Yeah, that's a good reversal there. It's a good reversal. I like it. Oh, I'm well. taking the cleats. Wow, that uh, that is impressive. I got to tell you, I mean, for you to be able to move like that and I'm just happy, get man, man get that's that. all those years of putting that bag up on that shoulder in one stride, not trying to fall on your ass. It's all top oh, strength. and then it's I got. I just got to say, well, I still got you on here that your oh, tags yeah. because. Ando, Ando was training your girl. Oh, oh everybody, yeah. I got to tell, let me, uh, hopefully this lasts for another three minutes, but everybody knows the last couple of episodes that I've got this deep rooted hate for this young lady named Hannah Gray, who I've never met before, who is now officially people no longer 53 over par since the park broke, and she is now 60 over par since the last Epson tour event. Okay. So this lady, Hannah Gregg, I was, scrolling through social media and I about fell off the bed when I saw that she was at Matt's trainers doing her little, f- she walks into these places. She's like, Oh yeah, I want to do the social media thing. I got 132,000 players and I have followers and I'm 60 over par, but I'm on the Epson to her, blah, blah, blah. Can, can I do a little video thing? And Ando caved in, didn't gave I don't know. Video. I haven't talked to him yet. So I see you him on Friday on this it. week. Yeah. Fourth of July right, really screwed out, up our routine, out, but, but you, I'll find out on Friday when I go in, uh, I'll, um, I'll talk to Ando about it I, I, because I want to okay. get the scoop. I want to see, Hey, did you cave? Did you do it for social media or did you do it at like, did she come in and just like, Hey, I'm going to throw some money at you. I need you to train me. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can't, you can't, you can't tell Ando about my deep rooted hate for her. Not yet. Anyways. Cause I he can't might, have her find out who I am. He, he might listen to the podcast. You know, he tends to know things when I go in there. So I do wonder. Does he? So he might okay. already know oh, about sorry, your hatred Ando. for her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Ando. Sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> All right, Bobby. All right. We'll let you go. I'm sorry. No, you are absolutely fine. This is just part of the part of the tour that you go on. I mean, sometimes you end up in some sketchy spots across America, and mm-hmm. Iowa mm-hmm. happens to be one of them. It does. I'm so sorry to all of our listeners, but uh, we'll make up for it next week. We will definitely make up for it next week, Bobby. Sayonara, my friend. I Take will care, see buddy. you next week. Take care, and one. everybody. So here's the thing. We are now going to go into a recap of the live golf event at Valderrama or Andalusia. So Taylor Gooch, he ends up getting his third win of the live golf leagues season, which was 
really impressive. If you ask me, I mean, he's been doing the full road tour started off in Australia with Adelaide. And then he went up to Singapore, one up there. So he hasn't won yet on U S soil. Um, so that's been a pretty cool thing to watch. I mean, he's just looking very comfortable winning golf tournaments now on live golf as Bobby would say if he was here right now, there's only 48 people that are on that league. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier, but he was up there against Bryson DeChambeau. Bryson went head to head with him as they came down the stretch. It was a fantastic, fantastic finish to that event. And Taylor Gooch really, I mean, he birdied the last hole, um, really no hesitation whatsoever with that final putt and took it away from Bryson. So Brooks Kepka ends up finishing third, another strong finish. And what I love to see from Anna Lucia or whatever the heck it's called, but Valderrama was the golf course and only 13 players finished under par, which that's pretty telling out of 48 players, only 13 players finished under par and Taylor Gooch, he ended up shooting Gosh, I'm I'm gonna they shot 12 under. So Bryson shot 11. Brooks Kepka shot nine under. And then Dustin Johnson, I mean, he was up there for the majority of the week. He's got a new putter in the bag. And for DJ, I looked at DJ and I'm like, man, he looks really good right now. There's just a little something missing. And that little thing that's missing is just the consistency. I mean, on sun, uh, it was on Saturday when he ended up. So round two, he ended up hitting a dead cold shank and actually got up and down for a birdie on a par five. So um, that was kind of DJ in a nutshell, kind of hitting some wayward shots every once in a blue moon. He had a double bogey coming down the stretch. He ended up finishing at three under par. And I'll tell you why I'm talking about him in a little bit towards the, uh, as we get into the live golf London event that is coming up this week. Uh, But really torque GC from a team aspect ended up taking Valderrama. I mean, they look great. Um, Scotty McGinnis, who we've had on the show, it's a buddy of ours. Um, he ended up, um, he's on Mito Pereira's bag. So he gets another win because that's two in a row for them. This young team is really doing something out there and it's fun to watch. I mean, I kind of like the teams. I mean, they bounce all over the place through each round. I mean, you never know who's going to end up holding that trophy at the end. And it changes as you get down the stretch and it changes by a lot because you got three scores that are counting. And again, as we talked about the golf picks, but louder, I mean, I feel like we got through that little segment there, but, uh, the two perfect picks last place individual C1 Kim, you're a damn legend. My friend, you are a legend and you are just, you, I cash in on you every week. Now I'm never letting you go. Um, and then the last place team cliques GC. So I picked both of them for dead last, got those correct. All right. Whew, almost out of win. Normally this is where I kind of open it back up to Bobby to talk a little bit of trash on live golf, but uh, we're just going to keep the ball rolling and get right into the preview of live golf, London at Centurion club. Mm, excuse me. Now here's the thing. I went over the entire golf course. I analyzed it broke it down. And I'm like, man, this golf course actually reminds me a lot of Boston last year. And if you recall who was playing really well at Boston and who ended up winning in a playoff was Dustin Johnson, but guess who was right there with him, Cam Smith. And then you look at somebody who's been playing fantastic. He is locked in. He has stated over and over again, he misses playing on the PGA tour. He probably going to come back after the merger goes through and everything is Brooks Kepka. and Brooks Kepka is playing some golf. I mean, this guy, he's just a little bit away from winning every single week, but he's consistently finishing in the top 10. So I really want everybody to watch out for a duel between, and it's not really a duel when it's three people, but Dustin Johnson, Cam Smith, and Brooks Kepka. I want to see those three go at it, but watch out for them because I think each one of those guys are going to play really well this week. And this is a golf course that kind of fits Cam Smith really, really well. Cam Smith right now reminds me of Jordan Spieth. He's all over the place. He's wild and crazy in terms of his ball striking. And then 
somehow, some way, he just ends up making bombs from all over the place, literally making just about every putt you could possibly imagine. I mean, he was dropping in 40 footers left and right out there last week. And so I definitely see him having a really good week this week at Centurion. I don't really have any of the English guys um, that are that none of them are playing very well. So I don't even think being on their home territory and course and so forth is going to really help them out. Now, the course itself, it is a par 72 and it's on the shorter side. So it's a little bit on the tighter side too, because it's, it's either tree lined for the fairways or fescue, um, just over 7,000 yards. So obviously this is like playing pitch and putt. And that's what it's really going to come down to for these big hitters. Get it in the fairway, put a wedge in your hand and see if you can make a putt. So again, I really like this week, Dustin Johnson, Cam Smith and Brooks Kepka really for those reasons, but, um, that pretty much wraps it up folks. I apologize for the connection issues we were having there with Bobby. We had to cut him loose, but man, what a great week last week, 4th of July. Just want to wish everybody, um, because a belated, uh, happy 4th of July. And we'll be back next week. Bobby's going to be in a better location next week. <laughs> Or at least we hope. Um, and that pretty much sums it up for this week. So outside of my wild adventures on a houseboat and Bobby's week of traveling six and a half hours from Detroit down to the little place in Iowa, I will say the one thing that really, really caught me off guard there was the laundry mat with a bar in it and even doing some nails in there too. Just uh, capitalism at its finest. So until next week, folks. Have a great week and uh, make sure to hit them straight, just like a good old pull hook. Have a good one. Thank you for tuning in to season two of the Pull Hook Golf Podcast. Make sure to hit subscribe and go to www.pullhookgolf.com for more information.